Overnight hikers, hunters and outdoors people of Reddit, what creepy things have you experienced in the forest? Breathing, just heavy breathing right outside my tent loud enough to wake me up. Not like fat guy going up the stairs breathing. Very large intense clear breathing. Middle of the night, no animal sounds, no grunting, no footsteps, just breathing from something large. I loaded my shotgun and pointed it in the direction it was coming from and waited for what seemed like a lifetime, probably 2-3 two, two, minutes, until it just stopped. I did not sleep the rest of the night and I didn't go out until the morning. No signs of any animals or people in my camp, no footprints, nothing disturbed. Still to this day I don't know what it was. As an experienced hunter who has chased away bears from my camp I have never been so scared. A number of years ago I was up in the northern end of BC in the islands out by Port Hardy. I set up camp right by the beach close, to sure did the normal catch a fish cook it for dinner on the campfire thing. Perfect really. A few hours pass, and it's getting dark I climb into the tent, and fall asleep quickly. I get woken up by extremely heavy breathing on the beach from something big. In the area of my fire, but the tide was in now, so the waves would have covered it. My first thought is bear, but on the islands, where I was bear, were not common at all to the point that there hasn't been one documented ever. This is blasting though my mind, but then the urban talk of Bigfoot runs through my mind. At this point I'm like there is no such thing as Bigfoot so what the hell is it? I gain my courage and open my tent. I shine my flashlight around, but I don't see anything, so I get out of my tent. I'm shining my light around, when I hear it again. This huge breath but followed by a small splash. I focus my light on the beach when I see a massive orca rolling around on the kelp right about where my fire was. This behemoth of marine mammal scared the living shit out of it, but it turned into being one of the most amazing events I ever witnessed. As I sat watching this massive animal rolling and playing yards from me, I noticed more of them just offshore just bobbing their prob half asleep. Needless to say I did not sleep after that until they left. Hiking alone in Washington. Late fall so it's cold and few people on the trail. I'm halfway up a steep switchbacked climb and laying down to take a break when two guys come along descending the trail. I wave and they wave back. As they get close one of them suddenly says oh, you're alone and then smiles at his friend. I get a little freaked out and I guess my dog sensed it because she stood up and stared sternly at them. She's an 80 pounds black lab and full of love but can look very intimidating. The guys saw her and completely changed and quickly hurried on their way. I'm not sure if they were gonna do something creepy, but I picked a much less obvious campsite that night. I was solo camping the Chattooga River. It was maybe midnight when I felt my hammock start to shake violently. I poked my head out and it's a goddamn raccoon trying to steal my boots. This was my first time solo camping and I nearly shit a hole through my pants. And it didn't end there. Those little gremlins tormented me all night long. Constantly trying to steal my crap. Moral to the story, don't feed the animals people. I was out camping in the White Mountains during winter time, when all of a sudden I start hearing branches cracking and snow crunching. I peer out of my tent to see a moose, maybe 10 feet away, its head down to the ground staring at me. I slowly crawled back into my tent, and it kept eating twigs. I was more worried it was going to accidentally step on me. The screech of an owl can be haunting. But the thing that freaked me out the most was a snake on top of the ocean surface. I'd never seen a snake around the beach before, and I had no idea they could sit on top of the water like that. It was sort of mesmerizing, but I saw three of them that day on the beach and have never encountered snakes like that again. One was diving in a shallow pool hunting crabs and it just sat down on the bottom floor longer than I thought would be possible. All in all, learned a lot about snakes that day. Was riding my horse down a trail. Heard a noise, tink tink, like glass. Looked down and saw a mouse in a glass bottle. It couldn't get out. Stopped, tipped the bottle and let the little one go. Was riding my horse down a trail and heard a dog whine. Real quiet, I whistled it started barking. Rode that way and found the dog. It was a German Schorther hunting dog who had tried to get out of a creek and had gotten his collar hung up in a root. Goodness knows how long he was there. He was skinny. On his last legs, if you know what I mean. Had a collar with owner info engraved. Called them and they were speechless. That dog had been missing for three weeks. 
He surely was in the water that long. Edit. Yes the dog survived. Life is tough. It was a hot summer. The dog was very physically fit and well taken care of. Active competitive hunting dog. My friend and I were searching for the perfect camping spot for about a year. After trying out quite a few we found one that seemed perfect. It was about a half hour walk from any trail or road and on top of a large cliff over a river. We got camp set up and decided to scout out around the area. It was getting dark so we started heading back following the sound of the river to guide us when we spotted something. A shack. We stop and look at each other and decide we better investigate because it is pretty close to where we are going to be sleeping and this is weird. We get closer and realize it is basically a TP made from scraps of aluminum and other sheet metal and a tarp. There is a inflated air mattress inside and wine and whiskey bottles everywhere. There was also porn and a lot of extremely weird objects that someone normally would not have out camping. This place is a couple hours from any town and like I said, at least a half hour from any road or trail. There were no vehicles parked anywhere even remotely close because we would have seen them in our travels. We came to the conclusion that whoever had been here must have left and they obviously did not want to be found. Then, on our way out, I noticed the campfire was still smoldering. We got the frick out of there, immediately packed up camp and blindly made our way back to the road. Frick that, I've watched enough horror movies to know that us teenage white boys would not be waking up that morning. Not exactly hiker slash hunter slash etc but... I was walking back to my parents country house a bunch of years ago. It was this time of the year, so it got dark pretty soon. I was around 16 years old and coming back from meeting friends one kilometer remaining of walk. On the other side of the road I saw a lantern. Couldn't see any details of the person however. Seconds later, he slash she aims at me with the light for what I felt so long. Then it gets turned off and disappears in the darkness. I don't think I have ran faster in my life. Meanwhile in another similar thread, I was walking through the woods to my grandma's house in the winter about 15 years ago. I brought a lantern because last time I had taken a nasty fall, being at winter and the early darkness. Suddenly out of nowhere, I caught this figure on the other side in the darkness, seemingly looking right towards me. I shined my light towards them to see if it was anyone sketchy. They just stood completely still, all creepy like for what seemed like an eternity, so I turned off my lamp and they darted out into the woods like a madman. Took off to my grandma's faster than I've ever run before. Didn't sleep much that night. Was deep in a state park in North Carolina at a primitive campsite with my mom. We were setting up camp after hiking 15 miles in and it started getting dark. We had a fire going, but needed more wood to keep it burning through the night, so we were poking around the perimeter of the firelight picking up sticks. My mom started reaching for a long branch behind a log but something about it gave her pause. She pulled another stick from the bundle she'd already gathered and hit the one on the ground. It started writhing, coiled up and started rattling at her. We both jumped back and watched as a 7 feet rattlesnake slithered away into the woods. We decided we had enough wood. This memory is over 20 years old and super foggy because I was super little, but here goes. We used to camp at this same spot every year until we moved. Anyway, this one summer I remember when we were first pitching our tent, the nearest campers came over to say hello and pass on some advice that had been spreading across the campground. Something about bears and how everyone should haul their food up in the trees or something. I remember the guy offering my dad some spare rope, if he needed any. All seemed fine and dandy. Mom wasn't see, but dad assured her a bear wouldn't come into a campground this busy. On night 2 or 3, everyone was woken to a crash, and the sounds of a car alarm. I remember pressing my hand over my sister's mouth, because I was afraid that, if she cried the bear would come over, or something silly like that. There was some distant shouting, and my dad decided to investigate. So he grabbed the tiny little skillet and his equally dissized, but in the opposite proportions, flashlight, and exited the tent. I remember rolling over, because there was this little tear I discovered the last time it rained. There were a lot of flashlights and people over by the bathroom, where a car's lights were flashing. It wasn't a bear that had been breaking into people's cars and stealing shit all summer. It was a crazy homeless guy who'd been hiding out in the woods. 
they were actually pretty sure he was the same guy who tried to attack two teenage girls at one of the nearby hiking trails a few weeks prior, leading to it being closed for the time being.